my name is Benito Lucio. Uh, I am retired from the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. And for 30 years, I represented the migrant and seasonal farm worker population here in the state of Ohio. One of the tough issues that I dealt with was the issue of human trafficking and the uh, difficulty in getting uh, folks to uh, go for help. And I'm very pleased to introduce to you Aaron Myers from uh, the Salvation Army. Uh, here in Columbus, uh, who has a, a statewide effort to address human trafficking. And I encourage you to really uh, pay close attention to these uh, individuals that have dedicated their, their uh, careers uh, to, to work to combat this uh, serious uh, issue that we have in our community, which is human trafficking. Aaron, welcome. Thank Tell you. us about human trafficking and, and the Salvation Army and all your efforts that you're, you've been doing for quite a few years now. Well, so um, human trafficking is sometimes described as modern day slavery. Um, it's, it's the exploitation of men, women, and children um, through either commercial sex or forced labor. So we see that in the state of Ohio and in other states in the United States um, in networks such as restaurants when people are forced to work um, or and are not getting paid or otherwise threats are being made. Um, we see it in domestic servants, uh, housekeepers, nannies. Um, we see it in, in um, brothels, in commercial sex, in massage parlors, on the street and in hotels, uh, also online. Uh, so when we are thinking about human trafficking, really it can be infiltrating so many elements of our daily life. Um, but we might not see human trafficking in every single restaurant, obviously, but when we are seeing individuals who are fearful of leaving, um, this culture of fear is created, so whether that's because they're being threatened, um, that if they report the situation to the police that they will get uh, deported, or that their family will be harmed, or um, that uh, they will be reported to Child Protective Services, which we often get um, for fear that their children would get taken away. Um, and so really, um, when we're looking at these trafficking situations, those that are being exploited and being victimized through these different networks um, are fearful of leaving because there's some sort of um, retribution or physical harm um, that's either been um, already inflicted on them or they've seen inflicted, inflicted on others um, or otherwise it's been threatened. So um, in terms of the services available, obviously this is a, um, an important issue to the state and there's many organizations that are working to combat it. Uh, the Salvation Army is just one. Um, I know there's other organizations that you'll hear from today. Um, in addition to the Attorney General's office um, has, has statewide efforts, the Governor's office has statewide efforts, and there's a lot of um, government and independent agencies that are working throughout the state to combat this issue. Um, a lot of what that means is providing education. So the Salvation Army is one of those agencies that provides education, as do many others throughout the community. Um, because if we don't know what to look for as, as, as a community, we don't know how to report it and we don't know how to get people help. So many of the individuals that are being exploited have such a limited access to people outside of their trafficking network. And so really it requires community members, church, church parishioners, um, people visiting the restaurant, people getting their nails done in a nail salon. It really requires those people knowing what those signs are to report the case so that law enforcement can investigate and service providers can be called to um, provide the, the uh, support services that uh, victims uh, need to move through recovery. Um, and some of those services include basic needs like shelter and food and clothes, but then also other longer term needs like immigration remedies, there's um, different visas that are available, uh, in addition to uh, mental health services are obviously a big need, um, and just general life skills training. Um, for, for those that were exploited, when they first were exploited as children, many have not had the opportunity to learn some of the basic independent skills that we take for granted as we're growing up. And so having the opportunity to kind of walk them through some of those um, skill building like budgets and um, and other uh, decision making skills is, is really imperative. You mentioned the, uh, the fear factor. Uh, from your experience of uh, working with uh, uh, folks that uh, were in that situation, how, how what's been your approach in, in uh, helping those individuals overcome that fear? Because I know that uh, from my personal experience uh, in my 30 years, that was always, you know, came into play and it was uh, one of the most challenging aspects of it, of getting those individuals to, to have that trust in us because, you know, you, you know, in a situation like that, 
they're getting out of this situation. And, you know, that trust to begin with is kind of, you know, very mm-hmm. iffy. Uh, so how do you uh, encourage an individual to have that trust in you? Well, you, you mentioned trust, and trust is really the, the big piece. Um, and similar studies suggest that similar to domestic violence, it may take multiple engagements with someone outside of the the network or the situation for someone to feel comfortable leaving um, or, or getting getting help. And so it may not be that first engagement that's that where that client feels or that victim feels safe enough to leave. It may be that it's the 10th the um, engagement or it may be that um, it's, it's the 10th person they talk to. It may not be even the same person, but it's about letting that individual know that you're there to support them and that and putting an emphasis that it's not a conditional relationship. So many of these individuals, it's it's this relationship that's based on if you do this for me, I will do this for you, or if, if you behave well, you won't get harmed. Um, you know, behave well, meaning something that the trafficker deems is the appropriate behavior. Um, so with, with making the relationship feel as if it's not conditional, so in the, you know, just being there to support them, whether or not they choose to leave at that time, um, or whether they're still making decisions for themselves and choosing which which are the best options for them, that really shows that you're you're there to support them and you can you're there to support their decisions, not other people's decisions. And you trust that right. they can make that. So it's a, a little bit of sharing that trust, mm-hmm. show, giving trust to let them feel that they can um, they can trust you as well. Uh, and and so and I also think that it's really important, um, particularly when you're working with foreign national populations, to be as culturally competent as you can. Um, so if you can be working with other um, other uh, populations that uh, are wor- are familiar with working with with certain cultures or certain um, people of certain backgrounds, that really can be helpful to help help build that trust as well. So for that person to feel like they're safe because it's it's um, it's a familiar language, it's a, it's a familiar um, experience, and they can feel more more safe in, in sharing their situation. I know that uh, many times. Uh you know, you, you mentioned too about uh, individuals, uh, the difficulty in getting out. And many times, uh, uh, it's an individual that has very low self-esteem. Uh, and how do you approach that part of it in in, in working to get their self-esteem? And, and you know, the, the interesting thing is that self-esteem issues, <laughs> you know, is is relative to almost every every individual. So uh, sometimes, you know, when I've, my personal experience was to always say to the individual, look, you know, this is not just something unique to you because sometimes, you know, that can be the reason why they feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always say, look, you know, I, at one point in my life, I had very low self-esteem. So it's not uh, something that, uh, you know, you should, you know, feel down about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, get help and you mentioned a lot about uh, the services to help an individual pick themselves up uh, learn a skill or you know uh, turn a new leaf and, and start a new new life a new career and, and all that's possible but uh, self-esteem uh, how what is your approach uh, in, in you know the agency that you work with in, in uh, helping those individuals uh, have a more positive self-esteem well, I think you were right in mentioning that, um, you know, approaching it from a non-judgmental standpoint. Mm-hmm. So uh, reminding the client that they're not alone, um, that they're not being judged in the room, that they're they're being supported. Um, but then, then also helping to motivate them to find their own strengths. Everybody, as you said, oh, we all have our strengths. Right. Um, a lot of the those that are being victimized have you know, shifted some of their behaviors for the need for survival. Mm -hmm. And so strengths that, um, or or reactions or or behavior patterns that may be in, um, in, you know, the nine to five situation looks a little bit, um, maybe maybe not, are are not considered appropriate ways to react to things in a survival situation are the appropriate ways to react to things. It could be considered leadership and, and reading people well, and things of that nature. So all, all, all of those that are being victimized have strengths, and reminding them of those, reminding them of their their strength in surviving this extremely exploitative situation, um, the sh- inner strength they found um, to survive is, I, I think, can be really helpful in 
um, helping them to identify their own confidence in making decisions to, to leave the situation and have, have confidence in, in their decision makings and, and their ability to rec recover and live independently on their own. For you that's watching this, uh, if you know anybody that's uh, uh, subjected to this, uh, uh, please feel free to contact the folks, uh, the different organizations that are out there to provide services. Uh, uh, to me, one of the most uh, uh, rewarding experience was to be able to help uh, a couple of individuals get out of that situation. And they're now successful uh, people in, in their lives, but it just took uh, that friend that said to them, look, uh, there is help and uh, there is this organization or there is this individual. Uh, utilize whatever means that you can to get them to come to the agencies that will provide the, the assistance to get, get them on, a, on the right path. Uh, it's crucial. Uh, this, this issue is not something that, you know, uh, that one organization is going to uh, address, address it. No, it's, it's, a, it's a partnership. It's a, people like yourself that are uh, just like myself and everybody else that, that are good, decent human beings that do not, do not like to see uh, people exploit it. Uh, given that we're uh, one of the greatest countries in the world, uh, we should never in this country allow that type of uh, uh, situation to, to exist in, here in the United States. Any other thing that you would like to add to those individuals that are you know, maybe watching us on Facebook or whatever uh, uh, social media, media might be out there uh, to tell that young lady or that young man and saying, we're here to help you. I think that's the best message, that it never hurts to call and report. If you're not sure if it's trafficking or not, it doesn't matter. You can call the hotline 24 hours a day. Tele-interpreters are available. You can text. You can report anonymously. Um, it never hurts to get more information. You might be that one person that noticed something that gets that person the support that they need. So um, it never hurts to call. Uh, it's, it's, always, it's always the best, best to call. We need people to recognize the signs and to call. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Uh, remember, folks, uh, see something, say something. Human trafficking is real. And Salvation Army and some of the other agencies that we're going to be interviewing, uh, and we're going to be sh sharing this information on uh, different social media, please help us uh, combat human trafficking here in the state of Ohio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.